Hello everyone, welcome to A Talks, and you are with architect Avitesh. Today we are going to discuss smart buildings, and our guest is Dr. Devasi Sanyal. He is currently associate professor and head of department of architecture department, NIT Raipur. He has been awarded Justice Mahapatra Award for research, HRF Best Teacher Award, and many more. Besides presenting more than 100 expert lectures in national and international universities, he is vice president of Indian Building Congress, Chhattisgarh Center, and member of many international associations. So, I would like to welcome Dr. Devasi Sanyal, and he is going to discuss on the smart buildings. Welcome, sir, and it's been a nice to be here with you on this platform so that my students can get knowledge from you. Thank you, sir. Please. Yeah, I welcome all of you. Should I uh, share the screen, your presentation, sir? Yes. Okay. Start. <coughs> Start, Start uh, sharing the presentation. Yes. Sure, sir. I'm here. Here you can go. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the topic of today is smart buildings. Now, why we uh, want to have a smart building and why architects are to be uh, more you know, uh, knowing about this topic is that the technology is advancing day by day and at present there is a need to uh, aware, uh, need for awareness generation in the architect's fraternity about smart buildings. Also. Uh, during the pandemic situation, the problem of uh, distancing and uh, the building should work automatically without touching uh, contactless kind of features. So that's why this becomes more relevant nowadays. Now, uh, as uh, we know that uh, Yeah. Uh, as we know that uh, smart buildings actually uh, work with uh, share, uh, share, uh, give a share. So just tell me uh, next, and I will uh, go to next. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, you know uh, the buildings generally we deal with are of two types. The first, what we are taking is an office building kind of thing where we have the form, geometry, structure and the need of the people, interaction, user and of course the place where we have function, uh, meaning, value, atmosphere. Why we are discussing with the office building because it's a sort of corporate uh, productivity area where people will gather. Next. Yeah. Uh, next. Yeah. Uh, this is the history of intelligent building. In 1980. Uh, this one, sir. Uh, yeah, 1980. In 1980, yeah. Uh, Yoneji Masuda first written a book about information society. What are the changes happening in the society, knowledge of industries, and a participatory democracy. That means that information should be spread all along the people. Every user should be having a transparent information. And then 1982, AT&T, the, the American company, first gave the concept of intelligent building due to marketing reason. From 1984 onwards, the smart house development in USA, automatic building, high-tech building, this kind of terms started uh, in the architecture fraternity. Next. Uh, 
this is a slight uh, next yeah uh, but in 1987 there was a headline in new york times which said that uh, intelligent building is a dumb idea uh, there there should not be any intelligent building <laughs> but uh, find that technology more and in 1990 loan works technology work started and since 1999 we have bluetooth and uh, home automation of 15% industry started automating 35% transport 15% and of course building automation 35% so this way uh, things have started actually after the invention of lifts there was not much development in architecture fields or building field because building is a very slow uh, changes happens in building field is very slow so now uh, they have to come ahead with the electronics and information technology supporting the buildings they should come ahead and start the new era next <coughs> so this is the workplace uh, paradigm here you have uh, building physics that is space and climate component we know that uh, climatology uh, uh, with the environment and all and then there is infrastructure adaptability wherever you go in an office or any building you start adopting the infrastructure of that place and then there is a building intelligence now building intelligence the climate will be monitored and changed by the building system that amend the environmental condition on the basis of real time occupation uh, densities suppose you go in the office for you only the climate will change the inside atmosphere will change air conditioning will switch on or the lighting will switch on so all this will happen because of building intelligence next uh this is the present scenario in a dumb office you know <laughs> people will not understand that what is happening in the next cabin uh, if there is a heat or there is a very cold or there is lack of communication in between so that's why uh, this kind of you know uh, scenario in the office next so what is a smart building smart building is an intelligent business proposition we have to have automation safety and productive at the same time next uh, a building which provides productive and cost effective in service and management and the interrelationship between them there is Intelligent Buildings Institute in UK gives this kind of definition of a smart building. So there has to be a, a very good interrelationship between all this. We will go into details about all this component next. Yeah, next. what is the need why do suddenly we want to go for this uh, 58% of of workers uh, do not believe that the office has been designed with their uh, own company's business and 30% of the churning rate in the organization may have some changes 24% of staff uh, staff satisfaction is influenced by the comfort the surrounding systems and 40% of energy and sustainability because 40% of the world's energy uh, is used by the building itself so that's why we need a building automation next yeah next so smart building uh, you can see here in the diagram one one before yeah uh, what is Uh, a smart building, one that provides a productive and cost-effective environment. Here you can see that if you enter your home, immediately your door, lighting, environmental monitoring, remote control, all red dots you are seeing here, security and alarm, they will start uh, collaborating with each other. And because of that, 
you get a environment which is secure and you you have a all uh, what is uh, what we call as whole wholesome effect of the building intelligence this helps the building owners to realize their goals in the area of cost energy management comfort convenience safety long flexibility and uh, they will not only automatically work the user interaction user can give their own choice about it that what we want so that choice will be also taken care of next now this is the schematic diagram of smart building uh, basically this will this is a building with a brain in the center you understand that this will control the lighting lift 24/7 monitoring hvac energy access security and fire system it has all the things in one room and that is what called as facility manager's room from where he can see the total building and work all this simultaneously anything is going to happen or it is happening it can be checked from here it can be changed and you can even ask the plumber or electrician to have information about this in real time they can have their own uh, you know the platform by which they can access the building and the things so this is uh, the idea what we call as smart buildings and the buildings which do not have any intelligence is called as dumb building so this is the two dominic lecture smart versus dumb yeah next now uh, smart buildings are generally integrated with the smart grid and of course connecting to smart cities now smart cities concept cannot be uh, a fruitful if the buildings are not smart the individual buildings should be smart and they should be then tied together integrated and then it will become a smart city so that is the idea and you can again see the small small components of the smart uh, building what are the things uh, which will be getting control built in a smart building next the aim is the technology allow us to operate the building more efficiently to construct the buildings in a more efficient way to provide an energy efficient and sustainable environment to provide a safe environment and of course differentiate and improve the marketability of the building if the building is smart then of course uh, people will also uh, like to give more value to the uh, building so that's why uh, these are the aims of a smart building next uh, this is a Uh, schematic diagram that uh, many new buildings are now being built with complex building automation system uh, like sensors control system uh, which gives a uh, uh, rich information streams and access to these streams is restricted information uh, will be used to building users as well as administrators to different different platforms uh, you want to give some information to the Uh, mechanic some information to the administrator all informations to somebody else so this kind of controls will be there and what we are talking about is a lawn net network within the building and not interacting with other buildings or uh, chances of hacking is reduced here because of this next so the basic uh, definition will be use of integrated technological building system communication and controls to create a building and its infrastructure which provides the owner operator and occupant with an environment which is flexible effective comfortable and secure uh, you can automatic notification that somebody has come to your door you can have a monitoring and control of your access system from your mobile only you can have security and alarm system and the local server can also guide you on all this uh, sectors next
Yeah. Uh, this is the in, uh, various components of the smart building, what we are talking about. And there, all the components were individual. Uh, there were heating, there were ventilation, there were air conditioning. Now we have a HVAC kind of system. Same thing with the audio. There was audio, there was video. Now we have audio, video together. So all this combined, we have this the building system. One is energy management system. Then there is lighting management system, then security system, including fire safety, telecommunication and office automation, land, cabling management, intelligent management, uh, maintenance management, and of course, uh, computer aided facility management. Facility management here means that one person will actually uh, manage the total building facilities in one uh, from one place. So that's why there is a facility management. The major category or aims are energy efficiency, you want energy management and control. That means the total building's energy will be seen at one place 24-7 and you want to increase or decrease any energy uh, uses. That you can do from the energy management software. Then there is life safety system, fire alarm and security system and then telecommunication, you all know about the email and PAP, etc. Workplace automation. These are the necessity for uh, components of the smart building. Next. Next. Yeah. Uh, why we want the uh, building? First of all, the occupant should have comfort. You should feel comfortable within a smart building. You should be able to achieve energy saving wherever possible. Suppose there are 10 occupants, the things will uh, use uh, start for only 10 occupants and not the whole uh, building will be air, air conditioned in that case. Avoid and reduce damages by sending warning. If in case lift door is stuck, you can immediately send a warning to the main system that there, there is something, some problem is going on. And increase the security when compared to the traditional security, there will be more security. Okay. Next. Now, uh, uh, how we will achieve this? By cheapening the communication and computing, we have at our reach today, uh, forcing the subsystem to that they should not be working independently, but they should or even against each other. Next. Next. Yeah. Uh, one major question arises here, which generally the people ask me. Are smart buildings and green buildings common? So here we see that smart buildings and green buildings have certain common features. Both want to optimize the energy performance, additional commissioning, measurement and uh, verification, carbon dioxide monitoring, controlling of the system, uh, how much control you want, controllability, and then permanent monitoring of the system and innovation and design. So these are common between a green building and a smart building. Next. Yeah, this is the comparison between a dumb building and smart building. Ordinary buildings, as you have seen, the cartoons depending on the changes of the environmental condition. Functional aspects such as light and automatically with the changes in the environmental conditions controlled by a computer. The cost of construction of intelligent building is very high as compared to ordinary building. But in case of ordinary building, a service engineer and an architect is enough. But here you need a security system, communication system, all those uh, people who have to be there. And planning a smart building, there should be a hardware engineer required with it. And the cost of the intelligent feature will give you a payback period only in terms of energy saving within seven to eight years. So any ordinary building with intelligent features will give you the money back between 7 to 8 years. Next. 
दिस इज दिनेरियो द स्मार्ट होम सिनेरियो ए सिनेरियो सच एस आई एम होम could be triggered by pressing one button on a keyring remote control from your vehicle as you approach the driveway the control system will receive this command it will start a functional uh, pre programming sequence like right in the garage driveway hallway and kitchen it will disarm the security system open the garage door unlock the interior garage tree door adjust the heating cooling To your own preset temperature. Turn on the whole house audio system playing your favorite CD, even while drawing your car. Now all this will happen with one one button touch from your car. So you understand that the sequential automatic operation of the home system, home will be ready for you when you are giving the command I am home. Next. Next, uh, this is the scenario two. Let us say at seven thirty you are uh, awake uh, with the sound of your favorite CD playing in the background. The light in your bedroom will switch on and again fading up to allow you to wake up in your own time. The downstairs intruder alarm system is deactivated. In the kitchen, coffee machine will, will start ticking and ringing. The ground floor curtains and blinds will open. the towel heater in the bathroom warms the towel and you have not even got up it so you understand that all this uh, automatic works which you generally do repeatedly every day will be done or will be taken care by a smart home so this will help you in concentrating your energy into more fruitful or productive kind of things yes uh, this is building automation system The building automation system comprises of electronic equipment that will automatically perform the specific facility function. It includes uh, more one or more building system like HVAC, security, etc. In short, BAS is to integrate traditionally separate function of temperature control, energy management, fire safety under one common operation. Thanks. you know uh, these are some innovative transparent materials you see now it is smart glass or switchable glass has come here if you want to have a conference area and then you want to separate out the conference area so there are smart windows available by switching on in a particular switch your glass will become opaque and this will uh, from translucent to transparent and changing from blocking the light or to allow the light so this way a smart glass is possible to make a smart window partition within your office room next uh, of course there is the natural lighting uh, you have tubular daylighting devices tvds which will transmit the visible light through opaque wall and roof there is smart light sensors most commonly utilized sensors are occupancy and photo sensors uh, this is this way that if you have a first generation intelligence that means you are walking in a corridor the lights will go on uh, in front of you and light will go off in the back of you so this way a smart lighting feature will save energy occupancy sensors will detect room occupancy such as conference room toilet hallway or storage area and primary technology used in occupancy sensors are ultrasonic and passive infrared sensors this will detect the amount of ambient light use this information to determine the amount of artificial light required to total ambient lighting in a defined value and therefore a day lighting harvesting is possible with smart light next responsive building elements building components of subsystems which are actively used for transfer and storage of heat light water and air uh, construction element like floor roof etc logically and rationally combined and integrated with building functions such as hvac and lighting then there are phase change materials uh, in the research where the they phase change in a range of temperature around the ambient temperature 
this property can be used uh, as a means of using the thermal inertia or thermal mass of the building component and thereby to smoothen the cooling or heating load. So, these are the new technologies coming up in the uh, smart material sector. Next. Yeah, energy is one of the major point. Uh, the purpose of energy management in the building uh, and hence the role of building energy manager is to identify where our energy goes. So, heating, cooling, ventilation, lighting, equipment, machinery, uh, machinery and domestic hot water. These are the points where our energy is spent. So, to manage this energy, we must have an energy management system. Uh, now here you can see that energy management system allows uh, the, to optimize the use of energy in buildings. You see my student is there operating the switch by which she can remotely control the total home, air conditioning in different rooms or video or audio or lighting system climate can be controlled through a small switch which can be there in the uh, mother's room let us say if mother is controlling or in the uh, your drawing room lobby or that next and uh, this is again uh, describing the various energy components you have HUs, you have elevators you have escalators all this are uh, taking up energy and you have to simultaneously control them together and give the access control and to a one platform from where you can control. So this way energy management is possible. Uh, Invariably switching off the light when uh, or energy uh, wherever you have uh, no occupancy. Next. Uh, uh, this gives a, a smart building energy management. Uh, there is a system architecture of high power and uh, these all are actually basic only. You can see the room A, room B, room C and room D. Uh, they have uh, the air conditioning on or off, lighting on or off. All these things is possible. Uh, power line control device is the users so that the system can determine the user ID and retrieve their profiles. And the authors use the processor board for sensor platforms for that. Next. Yeah, next. Now, this is what uh, we call as building control prototype and architecture. You can see that in a building, there can be a, a street smart, there will be heating, cooling, there will be waste equals to food, there will be productive workplace, there will be building steam, solar power. So, all these things are to be controlled and uh, we call it multi layer architecture of wireless sensor actuated networks. This multimedia information connected is the transfer of the sensor to the sync node by multi method and the control uh, demands are transferred from sync mode to the actuator modes hop by hop. So this way you control the total building. Suppose you want solar lights to be facing the solar uh, I mean sun. So you can do this or you want the shadow to come uh, upon your windows so you can do this. All, all this automatically can be done or you can even have a manual interface to control them. Next. Uh, the benefits, uh, benefit of a smart building is return on the investment, the whole life costing, uh, energy efficiency, environment sustainability and the productivity will increase. The ordinary people who are living in a uh, residence or who are working in an office, then uh, what is the part? It's possible on building in which is platform. You can simply sit in your home, your uh, roof uh, ceiling can be worked as a window interface and you can send your work or email or uh, data you want to your office from there. 
So all this is possible. Uh, there can be fire line safety, there can be access video, uh, anybody coming to your door uh, with a message. So this was really nice presentation sir, by you. As an uh, associate professor and also the HOD, uh, being a HOD of uh, architecture department, I would like to ask one question that like, what is the mismatch between theory and practical knowledge? Yes. Uh, theory and practical knowledge. Yes, that, that is the main thing. Now you see that uh, why academic institutions are made of academic institutions are made of so have a greater field of knowledge we will teach you what has to be done and in practical field they have certain uh, what we call constraint they will not follow the exact rules or they will try to uh, grab their goals by any means so this is not taught in our, our academicians what happens in uh, abroad, uh, the same kind of institution, the research is directly taken as a market, uh, marketability kind of thing. And from there, they start with a product. And here in our institutions, what we do, we develop some kind of new design or something, and then we search the market, who will adopt. Suppose you design a lampshade, who will actually manufacture the lampshade? You have to uh, try and uh, a lot to find out. So this kind of thing. And coming to the smart building, sir, what do uh, you think that what can be the changes after COVID in the construction field? Yes, uh, there will be more instance on uh, smart buildings because people want all these uh, things uh, happening contactless and with a, you know, social distancing. So. Uh, there we will not be a gathering in an office or a public space. So you want the things like uh, this kind of small, small gadgets work for you. So it will help you in not touching any uh, the lift button or any such command button. And uh, the building will take your own choice and it act accordingly. So that will help a lot, particularly in uh, your hospital or all the public places, this will be a boon. So next scenario will be automation in all area of buildings, all type of building there will be automation. At present, it's a very, very smart, uh, very small components you see, uh, automatic doors or this kind of thing, but it will now become a, uh, what, is, uh, what we call as a regular feature. All doors will be automated. Whenever you go, you need not put your hand in the door handle to open. Uh, sir, I think this will help to user. But uh, what do you want to say for construction industry? I mean, labor, how will they work with social distancing? Yes, uh, for them, this is a greater challenge. They have to start with a good working protocol. And from there, how they will uh, actually come for the... Uh, construction field and uh, slab and everything this there will be a whole lot of changes in their uh, working pattern this the supervisor or the contractor has to find out that uh, how they can maintain the social distancing and still they can work in a better manner thank you That's so the much big for problem. Uh, thank you cannot so have that many neighbors in one yeah place. this nice session I would like so, to say thank you so much. And yes, of course, after COVID, please come uh, come to this area and share your knowledge. And congratulations for your PhD also. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, viewers, you. you are with architect Deva, Devasi Sanya, with architect Avitesh. Sir just told us about smart buildings. And if you just miss our live conversation, you can go to my channel. Just like and subscribe it. Don't forget to share with your friends because this is really nice and good knowledge for every architectural student. And you will grab a wonderful uh, knowledge point of view uh, from the presentation also. Thank you so much.